الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد After a gap of few weeks, we just restart, inshallah ta'ala, from lesson 18 on the beginner's Arabic lesson. So just a quick recap, as we do on a weekly basis. So in Arabic, a word that has a meaning is called kalima. And it can have a complete meaning on its own. And it may have complete meaning, yet it needs some other agent to clarify its meaning to the fullest. So the one that has a complete meaning is of two types. Either it is time bound or time unbound. If it is within the time limit, it has got a time of any of the tenses, present, past or future, then it is called fail. If it is connected to the time, it is fail. If it is not connected, it is timeless, it hasn't got any time binding, then this is ism, noun. And then the one that hasn't got a complete meaning, although it has a meaning, yet it takes some other word either ism or fail to give its fullest meaning is called harf we've been tackling ism and then we said that we look at ism from four different angles so ism has four facets that you have to look at so each ism each noun would have one of the four or each of the four categories it has to go into so you have to know all four types to understand the true and complete sense from that word, that noun. So a noun would be either marifa or nakira, which is definite or indefinite. And we have gone through the seven subtypes of marifa. Marifa is something which is identified that you can specifically say about an individual as opposed to nakira, which is general, more indefinite that you do not know who you're referring to, but you have got the idea as a big group, for example. A man, which man I'm talking about, I don't have a clue, but a man as a general meaning. A flower that grows in winter and smells nice. But which flower I'm talking about? No specific one, general meaning. So this is general, more sort of indefinite as opposed to definite one where we have seven subtypes, Ismuz-Dhamir, which is a pronoun. It is ana huwa huwa mahum. You have gone through the gridan of the, the paradigm, all 14 of them. And there are many different types of Dhamir we will cover, inshallah ta'ala. Then ismul alam the proper noun, name given to an individual specific to him. Yet there could be more than one with a similar name. It doesn't matter, but that name given to that individual as his identity is this his name. So this remains proper noun. Ismul mausul, the relative pronoun. We haven't covered that yet. Ismul ishara, which is indicative. You're pointing to someone, demonstrating to someone. Hada tilka. And mu'arraf billam, it was nakira, like rajulun or baytun, but you made it into ma'rifa by adding al. This is counterpart of the in English. So a nakira, which you have attached or prefixed with the, and it becomes marifa. So rajulun becomes ar rajulu Baitun becomes al baitu Remember, al is a sign of marifa. And tanween at the end, baitun rajulun, kitabun, is a sign of nakira generally. Not all the time, but generally. So you do not have al and tanween together because one is marifa, one is a sign of nakira, so you do not put them together with al when you attach to some common noun to make it proper noun or a bit more uh, marifa, definite noun, then you remove that tanween, you just leave with one haraka, fatadamar kasa, whatever is there. Likewise, munada, the one you're calling upon, obviously, when you call upon someone, you know that person and it's identified individual or the thing or the place whatever you're calling on and if something is attached as a modaf some something which has a relationship possessed by something else then that becomes a marifa and if something is possessed by a marifa it becomes marifa itself mudaf ila marifa now we said that so this is one angle to look at another angle is to look at whether this is this noun is wahid tathniya or jama singular dual or plural Remember in Arabic, you have got dual as, as a two, as in some other languages have the same, uh, you know, way in dealing with the number of 
nouns. And it, it is either masculine or feminine, or it is in one of the three states, nominative, accusative, and genitive, marfur, mansub, and majroor. Then you put those two asma together to give it a sense of murakkab. So it becomes a compound, and that compound could be complete, which is tam, which is what we can sentence. We can say kalima, uh, the jumla, which is a complete sentence. It makes complete sense. You stop right at the end. You can put a full stop after that because it is giving a complete sense. You do not need any more information on that just to get that sentence completed. So there's a complete jumla, which is murakkab tam or jumla or sentence. And incomplete, there are many subtypes. Some we already mentioned here. So we'll look at some of those now. One is murakkab tawsifi, where you are describing a wasf, a an attribute, a description you're giving to the one being described, which is called mausuf or mal'ut, same meaning. Sifa or na'at means the description. It doesn't have to be good, could be bad, could be whatever attribute you want to express or explain about that individual or thing or place or that noun that you want to describe. But they correspond to each other. It's mausuf and sifa. Mausuf comes first, mausuf, sifa. They always correspond to each other. Ma'rifa, ma'rifa. Both should be same. If this one is mudakka, that has to be mudakka. If this one is singular, that has to be singular. They go like this, i'rab wise as well. Marfu, mansub, majroor, they both should be in the same declension. One exception is when there is jama' ghayr aqil, because jama' ghayr aqil is considered as a group. And group in Arabic is jama'ah. And jama'atun, as a wahid, singular, feminine, monus, yeah, group. So it becomes like that. So you bring about the attribute, which is wahid, monus, means feminine, singular, feminine. Okay. And with regards to jins or gender, every word, every noun is considered a muzakka unless there are these or any other attribute that would hint towards its being feminine. So it may be the name of a female person. It may be an attribute which is just specific to women. For example, a widow, for example, a bride, for example, a pregnant. So those are the attributes which are specific to women. So there has to be, the word has to be a feminine word anyway. Name of a female individual which you know is, is feminine regardless. And there are three signs that you can look at, which are signs of femininity. Rounded tie at the end, like Saliha, Sa'a, Aisha, Khadija, they're all signs of femininity, right? Rounded ta at the end. Ta with, you know, in a circular form at the end. And there's Alif Maqsura, shortened Alif, Uzma, Salma, so it's small Alif there, which sometimes you write, sometimes you don't, but you still know that there is small Alif there. And then alif mamduda, which is alif, and then hamza at the end. So you just prolong it. That's a sign of a femininity as well. Femininity. Sahra, zahra, hamra, khadra. And then paired organs of the body, places, names of tribes and countries. They're all femin feminine or, or female names. Arabs use it as female. And simai, there are certain words which are certain nouns which are feminine, but only because we heard Arabs using it as feminine. Is there a reason for that? We don't know. Well, there is possibly a reason, but leave that for the higher level. But at the moment, just remember that there are certain words which are feminine just because Arab use it as feminine. They are called simai. They're heard as being feminine from Arabs without knowing the rules. Others are qiyasi, but this one is semai. Then with regards to number, the every noun should be one of the three categories, either wahid, tasni, or jama. So what is the telltale sign that would hint towards wahid? Generally, tanween, unless there's al with it. Obviously, if it's nakira, then tanween is a sign of wahid. Shajarun, kitabun, waladun, boy. Masjidun, place of worship. Tathniya, ani, aini, aini. Marfu, mansu, majru. Ani, aini, aini. Shajarani, shajaraini. Kitabani, kitabaini, kitabaini. 
marfu, mansu, majru in that order, respectively. And then jama, you have two types, mukassar or salim. Mukassar is broken one, where you break the structure, again, for the haraka that you would get to be the same as you would get in wahid. Okay, dhammatan, fathatan, kasatan, all three are there. And then for salim, salim, you have mudakkar and monas. Salim means that you have kept the structure intact and added something right at the end. Whereas mukassar, you have changed the kitabun become kutubun. So you've dropped the alif there. The dhamma becomes fatha, fatha becomes dhamma. You know, it's change of the signs. So there has to be a change happen to the original makeup of the word rather than only addition at the end. If you kept that intact and added something, it's called salim, sound. And then it is of two types, mudakkar and muannas again. With mudakkar, you have una, ina, ina, talibuna, talibina, talibina, muslimuna, muslimina, muslimina, marfu, mansu, majru, in that order. And in muannas, you have atun, atin, atin, talibatun, talibatin, talibatin, marfu, mansu, majru. Now with regards to complete murakkab, murakkab tam, which is also called jumla, a sentence, it is of two types, fi'liya and ismiya. Fi'liya is when it starts off with a fi'l, ismiya when it starts off with ism. So the two parts to this compound, which is a complete compound, is muqtada and khabar. Muqtada and khabar. For murakkab tawsif, it was mawsuf sifa, and that was incomplete compound. This is complete compound with muqtada khabar. And then we talked about another compound murakkab idafi the two parts to it first part is called mudaf second part is called mudafili mudaf mudafili mudaf cannot take al or tanween it has to have no al and tanween to it because al is marifa mudaf when it gets you know possessed by the mudafili it's automatically becomes sort of marifa either by being marifa or by ikhtisas, so it becomes specific anyway. Because if I say my house, that house which is now belong to me is not nakira anymore. It is just a house possessed by someone. It becomes a bit more specific. So it's more definitive. So you do not need al. And likewise, you do not need tanwin because it is not nakira anymore. OK. And then mudafile is always in majroor state, which is genitive straight state. Mudafile is always in genitive state, majroor. You cannot put anything in between the mudaf and mudafile. If there was a sifa, a description of the mudaf, it should go after the mudafile. And there could be more than one, one mudaf and mudafile. Okay, let's look at some of the examples of the compounds. Al-baytu al-kabiru. Al-baytu al-kabiru. So we look at those. We see, oh, this is ism. Al Baytu is ism. How do I know that this is ism? Not fail. A clever answer is that because we're talking about ism at the moment. But you know, generally, if you find such thing, the al al is only prefixed to a, a an ism, not to fail or to harf generally. So it is ism. Al kabiru. Both have al. Both have dhamma at the end, which means both are in marfu state. Both look muzakkar, al baytu, it's long ta, not rounded ta, which is a sign of femininity. Yeah, this is muzakkar, al baytu. Al kabiru, both look muzakkar, okay. Both are singular. So, which compound that we get where they both correspond to each other in all four respects is mosul sifa. So, this is murakkab tawsifi, murakkab tawsifi. Both are marifa. Next, baytun kabirun, both are nakira now. Tanween suggests that these are both isms, and they're both nakira, they're both muzakkar, both singular, and both in marfu state by dhammatan at the end. So this is, again, murakkab tawsifi, it corresponds to each other in all four respects, whether it's marif or nakira. Ar-rajulu salihun. Now the first part is muqtada, and it's marifa. Second part is nakira, without al. First part has al, second part has not got al. Otherwise, they're both singular, both masculine, both uh, you know, in, in, so yes, one has got, you know, they're both in marfu state, both both got rafa at the end, one or two, dhammatan. But the trouble is, one is marifa, which is al with rajulu, but no al on salihu, which means one is marifa, one is nakira. So this construction is seen in muqtada khabar, in muqtada khabar, which is jumla ismiya, jumla ismiya. 
Okay, so nominative, uh, nominal sentence. Al-baytu kabirun. Again, marifa nakira. If you have marifa and nakira, then this is generally a muqtada khabar or jumla ismiya construction. Huwa Umar. Again, huwa al-dhamir. Umar is, so both marifa this time, both mudakkar, both singular, both in marfu state. So would you say that this is mawsuf sifa? No, because Umar is a noun. We know it's a, it's, and it's a proper name given to individual. So when you have, you remember the exception we said, if they correspond to each other and they could be most of sifa, then you need to make sure that the sifa, the individual, the, the thing that you're describing should have the ability to become a description. Who are Umar? Umar as a name hasn't got the ability to become a description. It doesn't describe anything. It's a noun, a proper noun. Ana Salim, I am Salim. So I, this is, despite the fact that both are Marifa, Umar is a proper noun, Marifa. Hua is proper noun because it's a Domir. So they're both Marifa, yet this is not an adjective. So that's why you say this is Muptada Khabar, Jumla Ismiya. Likewise, Ar Rajulu, Hua Salihu. Ar Rajulu Salihu is Muptada. Oh, Ar Rajulu is Marifa, Mudakkar, Wahid, Masculine. Likewise, a salihu. If you remove that hua from between, then it becomes also sifa because they correspond to each other in all four respects. But if you add hua in the middle, this is one of the ways because you've separated them by a pronoun hua. Allahu huwa al haq. Then it becomes muqtada khabar, despite the fact. So those are the two explanations, two exceptions where both compound, which has both component as marifa and they correspond to each other in all four respects, yet they can still be Muqtada Khabar if the second part has not got the ability to become a an attribute or adjective. And the second is, they both are separated by a damir, which means that you have you know, departed them, they've given a gap, and that would help in understanding that this is Muqtada Khabar. الرجل هو الصالح again جملة اسمية كتاب الله كتاب الله كتاب الله كتاب واحد الله لفظ الله is واحد as well both are apparently looking like كتاب hasn't got ال yet الله is مجرور that is مرفوع رفع كتاب الله so actually it was kitabun and Allah. Those are two, two separate words. You put them together, you make them into a possess, possessive case, means Allah's book, the book of Allah. So it is nakira and marifa construction generally, or nakira and nakira likewise can be if the mudaf ilay is majroor. The second part is in majroor state, then you can consider making it a murakkab idafi, murakkab, which is incomplete compound, genitive of possession, possession. So Allah's book. So kitabu Allahi mudaf mudaf ilayhi. Marifa nakira marifa. Like when nakira nakira, baytu rajulin, again, the second part is in majroor state. If it was mawsu sifa, they should have same declension. They, and here they have got different declension. So declension would identify whether they are mawsu sifa or they are and they are murakkab idafi actually. Okay. Just go over that on your own just to have a bit more consolidation of that understanding. Now, declension we started talking about. Declension is that the last part of a noun and a verb as well actually declines. It changes its position. It changes from one to another state some of them would completely decline to become some something completely different they are situational that they just go according to the situation if they need to be marfu they will show their marfu state so they're completely declinable so they are called mu'rab means they have the capacity or ability to show their irab but there are certain who do not show at all they are called mabni means they do not change their last letter status or the arab on that the, the haraka on that they do not change it completely they do not budge in at all they're firmly fixed 
they're fixed. So they're called mabni. And those who have i'rab means those who accept the change and show it, they're of two types. Either they show it completely or they show it partially. If they do it fully, it's called mu'rab al lafzi And if they show partially, it's called mu'rab al taqdiri means they show it, but there's subtle change there. But inshallah, we tackle that at some other point. What are the i'rab that you look at? What are the last letters sign that you look at? So these six, either you get a dhamma at the end. So where would you find a dhamma? Which states? So you, you would find in singular dhamma. Al-kitabu or dhammatan, kitabun. You can have the same in jama mukassar, a broken plural. Rajulun becomes Rijalun again, Dhammatan at the end. Arrijalu, Arrijalu, see, Dhamma is there, singular or two together as the nation, Tanween. And third one is Jamamu Annasalim, Talibatun, when it's Nakir, obviously. Talibatun, or if it's Al, you would say Atalibatu. So these are the three situations where you would find a Dhamma as the sign of marfu state. With regards to fatha, you would find that in mufrad, again, wahid, and jama mukassar only. Jama muanna salim does not take fatha. And these two are like taliban and tullaban. Now, this is the mansub state. And third one is kasra. Mufrad, jama mukassar, jama salim, all three would have it, which is either two or one, Zairs, Kasra or Kasratan, At-Talibi or Talibin, At-Tullabi or Tullabin, At-Talibati or Talibatin. So again, all three would be there, which means even in the Mansub state, Talibatin, you get Tanween. We'll cover that later on. And then this is I'rab bil Haraka, Harakat at the end. The marks, designation marks at the end change accordingly. But sometimes they have huruf at the end would change. They're not dependent on haraka, but on huruf. So alif, for example. In tathniya, you get alif. Mudakar and Munas both. So talibani, kitabani, baytani, sayyaratani, talibatani, mu'minatani. Anything you just add ani alif and noon. That alif is actually a sign of tathniya, and noon is in place of sort of tanween actually, which is just a Arabi thing, which just get elided when you make it into mudaf as you would elid a tanween. So that noon at the end is there on a temporary basis and it can get removed without much deliberation, really, because whenever there's a need, you just drop it down. But normally, Alif is a sign of Tathniya. And Ya at the end as well is a sign of Tathniya. Talibaini, Talibina, Talibataini. In all three positions, you would have Ya at the end. And that is a sign of I'rab. That's a sign that the Noon at the end, as again, would be dropped as and when needed. This is a sign of Tanween. And it's temporary. And then, you would have wow as well. Talibuna. Jama Mudakkar Salim. Talibuna in Marfu state. In Mansub and Majroor state, it will be Talibina. Una, Ina, Ina. Okay, so those are the different ways. Now, few situations for declension. That's important to remember. The Rafa or Marfu state, nominative case, Muptada is always in, well, generally, Muptada is in Marfu state. Khabar is in Marfu state. So Al Masjidu Mufara. Khabar is Maftuhun. The Masjid is open, for example. Both are in Marfu state. Likewise, accusative state, the Mansub state. What are the words, letters? Inna Annaka Anna Lakinna Laita La Allah, those six. They are called Nawasibul Ism. They would make Ism into Mansub state. That is why you say Shadu Anna Muhammad Dan, not Muhammadun. 
Muhammadun Rasulullah in marfu state Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you put inna anna ka anna lakinna laita la'alla before it it would become Muhammadan it doesn't change the meaning or it tells you that the state or the i'rab of that ism at that point because it changes the meaning and that is why you can put the word anywhere in the sentence it doesn't change the meaning as long as you keep the i'rab intact and you do it properly that is why if you say akala zaidun tufahan z ate an apple so if you put the order it would still be the fine it still be fine without having any trouble so if you say zaidun akala tufahan same meaning tufahan akala zaidun same meaning so that is why the end bit would make it easy for you to change the order depending on what you need to do it for whereas in english if you change zaid ate apple if you change the order apple ate zaid obviously meaning is completely different you can't do that in other language in most other languages in arabic you can because the declension would make it clear what the word is what is the status of that word in that sentence and you will still give the same ruling it becomes easier حروف الجر اه سو ذا جينيتيف كيس مضاف مضاف لي مضاف حب الوطن مضاف مضاف لي ذس از جينيتيف ستيت از يو نو حروف الجر ذي وود ميك ذا اسم انتو ماجور ستيت از ويل من الى في ان اوكي ليتس كومبليت ذس فاسق فاسق از ترانسجريسر سم ون هو دزنت فولو The commands of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wahid is fasiqun. What would be the mansub state? Fasiqan, majrur, fasiqin, and for muannas, fasiqatun, round it up. Fasiqatan in mansub state. Fasiqatin in majrur state. Tafniya, fasiqani. Here it would be fasiqaini, fasiqaini. What about here? Fasiqatani. Here fasiqataini, fasiqataini. They فاسقون فاسقين فاسقين فاسق فاسقات فاسقات فاسقات. This is نكرة. And then let's go to oh مذكرة مذكرة. فاسقون فاسقين فاسقين. Oh we've done that. Yeah all six. جمع مكسر. Sorry فساق 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 And then you can have like you know normally fasiqatun, yeah. And the monas would be fawasiq actually fawasiqu. Fawa, you know, it comes like on that scale fawasiqu, fawasiqu. Okay, fasiq, fawasiq, fawail, and this is. Dip toe, so you do not take the noon. This one doesn't take the fawasiku, fawasika, fawasika. Even it doesn't take kasra. For wahid with ma'rifah, you just put al, al fawasiku. Okay. See, for fawasiku, fawasika, fawasika, they both take. This is dip toe, and that is why it doesn't. The ghari munsarif, it doesn't take the noon and doesn't take kasra. Kasra is denoted by fatha. And you put al there as well, so that will be fine. Just to make it more, if otherwise it was nakira without al, hence the tanwin everywhere. Okay. This particular surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of I begin is you know is implied in the name of Allah, the Rahman, the Most Merciful and the Very Merciful. Liila fi Quraysh for the love of Quraysh. Ila fi him their love for rihla tashitai. What what was their love? Their love for the travel, the journey to in this. As winter and the summer, so they should worship the Lord of this house, Mudaf Mudafile and Mudaf Mudafile, the one who fed them min in in hunger, and provided them with uh, the peace min khawf from the fear. So this is what Allah has done. So they should. 
worship him for that reason. Allah has done that to him. They should be thankful. Okay. In Sarf, Mudare. Yes. So third person would be Yafalu. Yafalani, Yafaluna. Yabudu, Yabudani, Yabuduna. Same, same declension. Same, same way of saying it. Yabudu, Yabudani, Yabuduna. Yafalu, Yafalani, Yafaluna. Tafalu, Tafalani, Yafalna. Tafalu, Tafalani, Tafaluna. Tafalina, Tafalani, Tafalna. Afaluna, Falu. The, the passive voice would be yufalu. Yafalu becomes yufalu. Yufalu, yufalani, yufaluna, tufalu, tufalani, yufalna. Likewise, we we'll carry on. And if you want to make it negative, so la yafalu, la yufalu. La yafalani, la yufalani. This is how it, it would go. Mudari, you just put la to make it no, he shouldn't. Okay. And then if you add to your huwa, huma, hum, hiya, huma, hunna, anta, antum, antum, anti, antum, antunna, ana, nahnu, inna before it, then how would it change? So Kaannahu would become innahu, innahuma, innahum, innaha, innahuma, innahunna, innaka, innakuma, innakum, innaki, innakuma, innakunna, innani, innana, or inni, inna, both way is fine. And if you want to add iya, iya means specifically to, to you do we wish. There's some stress on that. And it is a mansub dhamir. So you say iya huwa become iya hu. And this is where we get this iya ka na'budu. To you do we worship. Okay, iya huma, iya hum, iya ha, iya huma, iya hunna, iya ka, iya kuma, iya kum, iya ki, iya kuma, iya kunna, iya ya, iya na. Okay, and then for harfijar, if you add harfijar, so with the same, we will say, Ilahua become ilayhi. How and why? But this is how Arabs do. This is just you have to memorize. Ilayhuma become ilayhima, ilayhim, ilayha, ilayhima, ilayhinna, ilayka, ilaykuma, ilaykum, ilayki, ilaykuma, ilaykunna, ilayya, ilayna. This is how they use. We have to just memorize them because there's no other way. Uh, otherwise, you would find it difficult to, to be connected to this Arabic. Anyway, let's go to Kitabu Lasasi. Baytu Bakr. At Darsu Thali Suasha. 13th chapter lesson. Baytu Bakr. House of Bakr. Hada Baytu Bakrin. Mudaf Mudafili. Hada Muptada. Baytu Bakrin. Mudaf Mudafili becomes Khabar. This is Bakr's house. This is the house of Bakr. Rakmul Bayti Thalatha. Again. The number of the house is three. The house is on the street of Masjid al-Haram. I mean, the street's name is Masjid al-Haram. It's located there. The house is big. In front of the house is a big house. Garden, Amam al Baiti, Hadiqatun Wasiatun, big garden, orchard. Wahaul al Hadiqati, and around the orchard or the garden, Surun Murtafiun, an elevated or high wall, Sur, wall, wall, Murtafi, elevated, means high. Wall. There's a high wall which has which is which has surrounded the garden. Baytu Bakrin, house of the house of the of Bakr, Qaribun min al Masjid is near the Masjid. Wa ba'idun an and far from the marketplace, the shopping center. Okay, so quite a few new words. Bayt house tisa nine arba four qarib near. Haram, holy in that sense. Amam in front of Sabah, seven. Ithnan to Hawl around Shari Street, biggest street. Ashara, ten, Khamsa, five. Baid, far. Sur, wall. Masjid, Masjid, Thamaniya, eight. Thalatha, three. An, from Murtafi' high. Safar. Or Sifr, maybe zero. Note. Sitta, six. Wahid, 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 singular. Wasi'a, you know, something which is spacious. Wasi'a, 
big. Again, same words. البيت كبير حديقة واسعة شارع المسجد القفص كبير. I don't know what they are asking here. It doesn't say at Tadrib Sani. Maybe just making you aware of how you would write. How would you? Yes, yeah, sur could be fence as well. Sur, sur could be fence, but it's mainly wall. Okay. Inshallah, leave, leave that there. We'll come to that tadrib. This is easy one. Ja'a ikhwa to Yusuf. In Qasas al So the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. Ja'a came. Ikhwa to brothers. is a plural of akhun. So the plural is ikhwan and ikhwatun. Innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. The rounded ta is not a feminine here. It is a sign of plurality. Sometimes you have rounded ties a sign of plurality as well. So this is uh, you, it is a plural of akhun. And this is mudaf. And ja'a Yusuf, uh, ikhwatu Yusuf, mudaf mudaf ilay. Yusuf's brother, brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. Wa kana fi misra wa shami. And in misr and in sham. So fi misra, fi is harfajar, is a preposition. It should make misra into majroor state. And it is in majroor state, except that this is diptoed, ghayru munsarif. It does not accept kasra or tanween. It's kasra or majroor state is denoted by a fatha zabar on the top. That is why wakana fi misra wa shami. Sham accepts this kasra. That's why with sham you have the kasra. Maja'atun kama akhbara Yusuf. Yusuf. Maja'a is hunger, means drought, means there was a lot of uh, starvation going on. Kama akhbara, as Yusuf explained, as Yusuf foretold, gave the information, he told them about this. Wasami'a ahlu shami, and the people of Sham, Syria, heard. Wasami'a Ya'qubu, and Ya'qubu al-Islam heard. Anna fi Misra, that in Egypt, Rajulan Rahiman is a generous man for annafi misra and in egypt jawadan kareeman is someone who is very generous very honorable and he is appointed on the treasures of the earth it means he is the treasurer there people heard about him this is Yusuf al Islam when he took the office after coming out of the prison. And people used to go to him and they would take food. And Yaqub al Islam. So Yaqub al Islam sent Abna Ahu, his children, Mudaf Mudafile, Ila Misra towards Egypt, Bil Mal with some money. So they bring food. I mean, bring some staple stuff like rice, wheat, so the people can have some thing to go on and live their normal life during the time of drought and famine. So Binyamin stayed with his father. Because Yaqub al-Islam kana yuhibbuhu jiddan. Used to love him, Yaqub al Islam loved him a lot. And he didn't want that he becomes far away, he distant, he goes far away, and who from him. He doesn't want that. Wakana Yaqubu Yahafu Ali, Yaqub al Islam used to fear for him. Kama kana Yahafu Ali Yusuf, as he was fearful for Yusuf. But Wajjaha Ikhwata Yusuf. Brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, tawajjah, they faced me, they started their journey towards Miss Ila Yusuf. Means they confronted, they encountered Yusuf alayhi salam's brother, encountered Yusuf alayhi salam, whom la ya'arifun, while they could not recognize him, annahu akhuhum Yusuf, that he was his brother. They couldn't recognize that he was his brother. 
يعرفون, and, he, and they didn't recognize and now Yusuf, that he is Yusuf, الذي كان في البئر, the one who was in the well. وهم يظنون, and they felt, they thought, أنه قد مات, that he was dead. He died. وكيف لا يموت, and why would he not die وقد كان في البئر while he was in the well? I mean, how would he survive that? That's why they never thought that it would be someone like Yusuf. They've forgotten about him. He was in the well, and this well was deep. And this well was in the middle of a jungle, a forest. And this forest was deserted. There was no, you know, hustle and bustle of normal life. It's like quiet place. And it was in the night. And the night was dark. The brothers of Yusuf Islam came and then they entered upon him. So he recognized him while they could not, they could not recognize him. They rejected, they didn't identify Yusuf or Yusuf Islam. They didn't identify or uh, knew it, Yusuf al Islam. They didn't recognize him. Well, I can ma and Karahum Yusuf Bal Arafam. Well, I can Yusuf al Islam didn't forget them. He could recognize them straight away. Arafa Yusuf and Nahaula il Yusuf al Islam knew that these are the one whom Levina, those who have Al Kuhu fil Bir threw him in the put him in the well. Wa and Nahaula and these are the ones whom Levina Kanu Yiriduna Katla. Those are the ones who wanted his killing. His murder. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected him. Yusuf, but Yusuf al-Islam didn't say anything to them. And he didn't make them embarrass. He didn't say anything or embarrass them. Inshallah, leave that there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.